memory and it's developed at the Technion. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Yav Tsuyar of the Technion and today I'll be talking about the paper Efficient Clock-Free Doable Sets. Uh, this is a joint work of uh, Michal Friedman, Gali Sheffi, Nachshan Cohen, Eres Petrank and myself. So as the title suggests, I'll be talking about highly efficient, lock-free, durable, scalable sets. So let's get into these terms. So in talking about sets, I'm uh, referencing an uh, abstract data structure that has a group of unique keys and supports the insertion of a new key, the removal of an existing key, and querying whether a key exists or not, using contains. Uh, these sets are uh, durable because when running on the new uh, persistent non-volatile memory, uh, after a full system crash, uh, the execution can resume on them, so they're recoverable. Uh, these uh, sets I'll be showing are scalable on our 64 core machine, and they achieve uh, more than three times better throughput than state of the art. Uh, another nice feature is they provide uh, a progress guarantee called lock freedom, which means that in any point in time, at least one thread is making progress. And to go along with all these changes, we have a lightweight memory, memory manager. So first, uh, sets are widely used. Uh, on this slide, we have a fraction of all the databases that have uh, sets in their core. So for instance, we have Druid uh, that uses skip lists, and we have memcached that uses hash tables. Um, so the architecture uh, all of you have on your computers nowadays is you have the CPU and register file that is connected to the caching system, then to the mem memory, which is the DRAM, and finally to some sort of secondary memory uh, which is the hard disk or SSD. Uh, when facing um, a full system crashes, only the data that is safely stored on the secondary memory uh, can survive, leaving the data on the main memory and caches vulnerable to these bar, um, shortages. Sorry. Um, Intel released a few months ago a, a new hardware component called non-volatile memory, or NVRAM for short, uh, which has the same byte addressability of the DRAM and uh, same, uh, well, comparable um, access, um, latencies of access to this hardware component. And it moves this red line closer to the CPU and caches, leaving only the data stored in the caches and register file uh, vulnerable to crashes. And with greater capacities, the secondary memory may become obsolete eventually. So uh, when working uh, with programs, only the um, version of the variable you work with in the cache is updated first. And for it to be updated in the main memory, uh, there are two ways for that to happen. The first is called an explicit flush. So if, for instance, I write uh, x equals 2, uh, the version in the cache is uh, updated first. And then I can execute an explicit flush to update the main memory as well. Uh, this, co this is considered an expensive operation. Uh, another way to uh, propagate data from the cache to the main memory is through an implicit flush. So when um, a cache line is evicted, uh, in the process it is written back to the main memory. So here, for instance, I write uh, x equals 3, so we update the cache. And then after a while, uh, because of some uh, unknown reasons, the cache line may be evicted and written back to the main memory. So um, because of these implicit flushes, some uh, con um, consistency problems may arise. So if, for instance, we have uh, this program, we have uh, A equals 1, B equals A, so we would expect that in the end of this program, both A and B would equal to 1. So let's start running this uh, program. So we write A equals 1, so it's updated in the cache. Then B equals A. So again, now in the cache, we have this um, correct state. And then after a while, let's say that B is propagated to the main memory. And then we have a crash. So as we mentioned before, all the data uh, stored in the cache and the register is, is lost. And we have some incorrect and inconsistent state in the main memory. So when talking about correctness uh, with concurrent and crashable executions, it's a bit more complicated. So when talking about non-crashable executions, but concurrent ones, we have uh, uh, one definition is linearizability, where uh, we can think of each operation as if it takes effect in instantaneous point in time at the linearization point. 
Um, and so for instance, in here, we have uh, two threads running. Um, thread one inserts five, while thread two queries uh, the existence of five. And because of the utilization points, we can tell the, the query happened after the insertion. Um, so when talking about uh, crushable concurrent executions, we have uh, one of the definitions we have is doable inelizability, where we have the same operations from before, but um, alongside them, we have crashes uh, in red here, and usually after each crash, we have a recovery phase. And in this particular definition, uh, we assume the whole system crashes together. So um, uh, an execution is considered doable and eligible if after removing those crashes, the remaining execution is linearizable. Um, the sets I'll be showing you today uh, satisfy this uh, correctness definition. So another problem uh, that may arise uh, when we do not persist um, data is uh, we may lose um, data, essentially. So if, for instance, we have this list and uh, one of the links, uh, the one uh, highlighted, is not written back in the main memory, about half of the list will be lost after a crash. And because explicit flushes are expensive, our goal here is to design uh, data structures that remain consistent after a crash while having a low overhead. So when trying to implement a naive, um, durable um, data structure, we encounter some dependency issues. So again, we have uh, this execution. We have a thread one inserting five, while thread two inserts six and seven. So let's start the execution. So we start by allocating the new node five. We then uh, initialize uh, its pointer to point to 83. Note that the pointer between 5 and 83 is volatile because we did not write it back to the main memory yet. Uh, we then flush the node itself and the um, pointer to 83, and we change 4 to point to 5. Note that uh, the pointer between 5 and 83 is uh, grayed out because it is not yet updated in the uh, main memory. So in the cache, we have the pointer between 4 and 5, but in the main memory, we have the pointer between 4 and 83. So now the insertion of six uh, begins and ends, and so does the insertion of uh, seven. And then we have a crash. So after the crash, we, only, we have the link between four and 83, undoing the insertion of five, six, and seven. And note that uh, this execution is not durable and erasable because the insertion of both six and seven ended prior to the crash. Uh, in this particular case, uh, to make this execution durable and erasable, we need um, to make sure that five is durably in the list before inserting six, and we need to make sure that six is durably in the list before inserting seven. So uh, a trivial solution to that is changing the accessing um, um, instructions we have. So if, for instance, we have the read, write, and cast operations, we need to flush afterwards the variable reread. Uh, this trivial solution solves the problem we saw before because when traversing the list, and reading the, uh, the links, we will flush them. Okay, so uh, previous work uh, that dealt with uh, specific sets um, used uh, to um, make only the, the crucial data itself persistent. So if, for instance, we have this uh, NV tree, um, the leaves containing the actual data would remain persistent and persistently linked leaving the upper uh, index nodes volatile and the links between them volatile as well. Uh, the same idea was used for the NV skip list, which keeps the uh, lowest level list um, persistent and persistently linked, while leaving the upper levels uh, volatile. Then after a crash, uh, both the internal nodes and the upper level, um, um, upper levels in the skip list could have been reconstructed. So in uh, previous work, just uh, removed those uh, upper levels in the skip list, but we managed to even get rid of the links between those uh, persistent data. And because of, we, because of uh, these links being eliminated, we eliminate those uh, dependency issues we discussed before. So in this talk, I'll be talking about two algorithms. The first, link-free, to convey the uh, concept of not persistent links between uh, nodes, which is uh, simpler and an expert could implement it. And the second one is called soft, which is a bit more complicated, but has some uh, sort of uh, 
theoretical value to it because it achieves a theoretical bound we'll be talking about later. Um, so uh, the nodes we allocate cannot be just allocated from all over the hip because we would not find them during recovery. So for that, uh, to this end, we have uh, designated areas from which we allocate our nodes called durable areas. And uh, each node has two flags in it, one called validity and the other called deleted. So in this case, this node is valid and not deleted. And these flags are used to indicate uh, set membership. So let's start with the first algorithm, link-free. Uh, here I'll show you how the insertion to a li link-free list work. Uh, the list uh, is based on the uh, lock-free list of Harris. So we start by finding the predecessor and successor of uh, our key, in this case, 33. We then allocate a node from the durable area. So note, it, note that it is allocated in a valid and not deleted state. Sorry, in the valid and deleted state. Uh, we then make it invalid and not deleted. We make it not deleted so that partial uh, writes will not be reflected in those durable areas uh, while the node is valid. Uh, we then initialize its fields with the key and the pointer to 53. Uh, we cast it in. Know that unlike uh, Harris's list, uh, this reachability does not, guarantee, it does not mean that 33 is a logical part of the set. Uh, we then make the node valid, and now uh, 33 becomes a logical part of the set. And we finally flush it to ensure the uh, insertion is persistent. So let's go back a bit. Uh, when casting an invalid node into our link-free list, we make some sort of instability regarding the key 33. It means that uh, other operations uh, on the key 33 seeing this invalid node would have to first make it valid and then flush it. But other operations on other keys would just uh, traverse the list and ignore this uh, instability. And of course, uh, before uh, finishing the operation, we need to flush it. But note that we flushed it without uh, flushing any pointers, which is our main idea. Uh, so the second algorithm I'll be talking about now is soft. So um, at Coin et al. have explored some theoretical bounds regarding uh, durable and analyzable lock uh, objects. But in this specific talk, I'll be hand-waving a bit because of the lack of time. So um, when talking about objects, Coin et al. divided uh, the operations on them to updates and read-only operations. So they've concluded that the number of flushes per an update operation. Um, they've proved that you need at least one flush. And when talking about read-only operations, the, you don't need any flushes at the lower bound. So how does soft work? So uh, up until now, we've seen link free in which we needed to flush something we read to make sure that if we depend on other operation, uh, we want to survive it if it survives. And thus, we could not have reached the uh, lower bound, especially when talking about reading operations. And in soft, we do uh, some sort of the opposite thing. We persist uh, uh, the node before linearizing it and thus guaranteeing that when we read something, it is already been persisted. Uh, so in soft, unlike link free, uh, each key has two entities. Uh, we have the persistent node, which is allocated from the uh, durable nodes we discussed before. And we have the volatile nodes, which are not allocated from there, and only they take part of the um, volatile link, uh, index. Uh, so let's talk again about the insertion. So um, we start again by looking for the predecessor and successor of this key, which is a 43. We allocate this compound of nodes, both the volatile and the persistent one. We, after that, initialize the uh, field and note that the volatile um, node has a field called state, which indicates in which part of the update we are in. So because we are in the middle of an insertion, the state is intend to insert. We then cast the Voltal node into the list and making this whole compound reachable, but 43 is not yet the logical part of the list. But note that uh, the success of this cast guarantees the success of this insert, meaning that because this cast succeeded, the insert will eventually return true. Uh, after that, we initialize the persistent node and flush it to make the insertion um, persistent. 
So here we did the persisting before the linearization, which comes last when we change the state of the volatile node to be um, inserted, uh, which is the linearization uh, point here. So um, finally, we have reached the evaluation section where we compared our uh, link-free and soft hash tables to the state-of-the-art log-free um, data structures, which were presented by David et al. Uh, we uh, evaluated the, uh, these data structures on our 64 core machine. Uh, so the first graph here is a scalability test. Uh, so we have a throughput as a function of the number of threads executing, meaning that uh, higher on the y-axis is better. So we have, uh, with, uh, with orange, we have soft, which is 3.3 uh, times better than log-free with 32 threads. And we have uh, link-free, which is 3.2 times better with 32 threads. And when talking about 64 threads, we're more, both are more than uh, 23 times better than uh, log-free. Um, in here, we have a similar graph uh, depicting the uh, throughput as a function of the workload. So again, higher on the y-axis means better. So we have, uh, in with 0% updates, we have both soft and link-free almost uh, double the performance of log-free. And when the workloads becomes more write uh, intensive, up to 50%, the gap uh, uh, increases. Uh, so throughout this presentation, I've used some uh, um, previous work, so I'll just mention them briefly. Uh, we've used the linearizability of early he and wing, the log and lock free uh, linked list of Harris, the NV tree of Young et al, the durable linearizability of uh, Israelovich et al, uh, efficient logging, um, sorry, efficient log and durable logging was, uh, of which we used the uh, state membership was of Coin et al, and theoretical bound of Coin et al as well, um, the NV skip list of Chen et Yehom, and the log free data structures are of David et al. Uh, so to conclude, I've shown you today two algorithms for durable sets, uh, both performing more than uh, three times better with 32 threads. Uh, one of them, soft, uh, reaches the lower bound, and the other, link-free, uh, is better when talking about longer uh, lists. Behind both algorithms stands the main idea of not persisting the structure, but rather the items of the uh, set. And we implement this uh, main idea by uh, using durable areas to keep the nodes in, we used a more sophisticated set membership rather than just reachability, and we used a careful interplay between linearizability and durability. And before I finish off, I just want to mention that the code is public on GitHub, and the uh, proof, uh, the full proof, uh, is available on the archive. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please queue for questions here? And uh, while you are preparing your questions, I would like to, to ask you, you have shown us an algorithm that works on, uh, on sets or, or lists. Mm -hmm. um, what about other data structures? Can you abstract and say, could you work with, uh, um, with trees or DAGs? Or, and can you abstract what, what were the principles that you used to design the algorithm? So in this specific algorithms, we use the fact that we're working with sets. So the structure itself is not uh, important. But when talking about queues and such, uh, the structure is important because you want to preserve this uh, um, FIFO the principle. Yeah. So, uh, so these principles will not be uh, applicable to um, these sorts of data structures. So that means you will be in business for many, many decades now. Probably. For every data structure new algorithm. Uh, if it, it has an important structure, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, so there are these works such as NVHTM and DUTM that provide um, persistent memory guarantees on uh, just arbitrary transactions that access all kinds of data. How would you say your work compares against something like that? Very few. If you just took, uh, let's say, NVHDM and then uh, used it with some uh, transactional implementation of a uh, set. How would you? How would it compare to that? So when talking about transactions and making the entire heap persistent, you have the generality of uh, making any object persistent, but it comes with the cost of using locks, which is a bit more um, complicated uh, with dealing with crashes. You have some sort of uh, nesting calls, and the uh, critical sections become a bit uh, tedious to deal with. So it's, in here, it's a bit simpler than that. 
So you have this trade-off. So just curious, did you need, or did you need to do anything special to handle things like NUMA effects in your implementation? Uh, in this specific case, we did not uh, deal uh, with uh, NUMA effects. So. Okay. You spoke about proofs being available. Uh, can you say uh, one word and about that? Um, yeah, so uh, we proved both that the both sets are lock free and durable and arizable, which uh, both uh, uh, these proofs are also available on the archive. And um, well, we did that using the uh, durable visibility um, correctness definition of Israel of HL. And uh, it, it's a, a full correctness proof uh, we did manually. Let's thank you all.